Hello and welcome to JHEP's lesson on critical path analysis. This is for AQA only because Edexcel and OCR do activity on ARC whilst we do activity on nodes and trust me there is a difference. So the first thing is that when we have a project we usually have activities that connect to it to make this final project work and sometimes for us to do another activity, a previous activity must have been done. So we usually put this on the graph like here, over here. This, this is called a precedence table. And we've got three activities here, and they take five days to happen, right? So activity A takes five days, activity B takes three days, activity C takes two days. Nothing happens before it, so nothing depends so this activity does not depend on anything before it. Activity D, however, depends on A and B being completed and it takes four days to happen. So if you think about it, if activity A and B need to be completed, the minimum time it would take, the minimum day that you can start activity D would be on day five because that's when activity A would finish. Activity B will finish shorter than that but we still need to wait for activity A to be finished. For E, exactly the same thing. B and C need to happen first. And E only takes one day, so that's good. B and C, so the minimum day it starts will have to be three because even though activity C takes two days, we still got to wait for activity B. And it happens on like that. It goes on and on and on. And as you can see, the longest one takes nine days, which is activity G. We can put this on a diagram to make this a little bit easier to look like. And we put this on a uh, on this diagram over here. This is partially completed, mainly because we are going to draw, I'm going to show you how to draw it in. So activity A over here, this one over here, oops, why is it white? This one over here shows us how long the activity is going to take and as you can see here it takes five days so it's going to take we write five here activity b takes three days activity c takes two days this is the earliest start day that we can start this is what i was talking about you see how for uh yeah over here you see how for d i was talking about the earliest day that you can start is on day five because activity a takes five days to do so over here i can say that the fifth day is the earliest start date it can start okay over here we have zero because obviously these will start on day zero these can start immediately so in which to do this i'm going to start drawing the structure of the critical graph before we fill in the numbers i'm going to show you very quickly how we do it and then i'm going to pause the video and finish it off because it will take quite a long time so, we need to see what each activity depends on. We know that activity D depends on A and B. So therefore, we need to connect D to A and B, like that. Activity E depends on B and C, so therefore it needs to be connected like so. So, if we look at this one over here, activity F, we can see it is uh, depends on activity D. So therefore we need a line from activity D to go, oops, to go to activity F. Like so. Yeah, I told you it's going to take a quite a, quite a long time. So I'm going to pause the video. Activity F. Okay, and we do need to draw the arrow in which it goes in. I'm going to do two more and I'm going to finish, I'm going to fill it in. So activity E depends on B and C. So, oh, we, that's already done already, sorry. Activity G depends on E. So we could put activity G over here. Like so. Okay, and it goes, and it goes on like that. And we keep on joining them together. So we would eventually end up with a critical graph. As you can see here, G depends on E, H depends on F and G. 
So F depends, ooh, I'll keep on remember, H depends on F and G. That's it. So we would need activity H and we would need F and G to go into it. F and G to go into it like so. Remember the arrows do need to be directed. So I'm going to finish it off. I'm going to pause the video. Right, so here we've got the completed, uh, well, not completed, but the structure of it drawn, J and K. So what we can fill in now, because it's in the president's table for, uh, over here, we can fill in the duration of it all. So I'm going to uh, fill it in. So for example, over here on D, it says that it's going to take four days to do it. So we put it in the middle. E takes us one day, so we put it in the middle. F takes us two days. G takes us nine days. H takes us one day. I takes us six days. J takes us five days. And K takes us two days. And don't worry, I did not remember this off by heart. I've got the table on another page. So over here, we've got all of them here. Four, one, two, nine... Ah, four one two nine one six five two, and over here we've got four one two nine one six five two. Okay, so these are how long each activity is going to take. Now, as we noticed, I did say that the earliest day that activity D can start is on day five. Okay, and the way we can do this without the precedence table is to actually start an early time algorithm. And by doing that, all you've got to do is to add up these two numbers, okay, the early start time and the duration. And whichever number is the biggest, that will be your next early start time, okay? So for D, we have A and B connecting into it. 0 plus 5 is 5. 0 plus 3 is 3. So therefore, the latest, well, the earliest time that D can actually start is on day 5. So we'll put that here. Is on day 5, okay? It can't start on day 3, if you think about it. It can't start on day 3 because A still needs to be done. So we need to add up these two numbers and whichever one's the biggest goes over here. So for this one over here, 0, B and C connect into E. 0 plus 3 is 3. 0 plus 2 is 2. So 3 is the biggest one. So we need to have 3 there. This one's fairly easy because on F only D connects into it. So 5 plus 4 is 9. Uh, for G as well it's easy because we only have E connecting into it. So 3 plus 1 is 4. Over here we've got 2. Connect them into it. 9 plus 2 is 11. 4 plus 9 is 13. 13 is the biggest one, so that goes there. 13 plus 1 is 14. So 14 goes onto both of them. And 14 plus 6 is 20. 14 plus 5 is 19. 20 is the biggest one. And there you have it. So those are all. That is the earliest start algorithm in a nutshell. The latest start algorithm, the latest finish time, is actually more or less the same. So we have... 20 plus 2 makes 22. So this is the latest finish time it can, well, finish. K is going to finish on day 22, whether you like it or not. If this was a, if this was, yeah, okay. So what we do, we look at the latest finish time and the duration, but instead of adding it, we subtract it. So I'm going to use a different colored pen for this. So we subtract it. 22 minus 2 makes 20. And as we've got 2 coming out of there, it would be 20, 20. Now over here, we've got a choice. H goes into I and J. So what we've got to do is we've got to minus this. 20 minus 6 is 14. 20 minus 5 is 15. And what you do you uh, you writing the smallest number in this case. Okay, so it's no longer the biggest number, it's the smallest number. 14 minus 1 is 13. So we write that here, and we write that here. 13 minus 2 is 11. 13 minus 9 is 4. And there we have it. 
Oh, we haven't even finished yet. 14, 11 minus 4 is 7. Uh, 11 minus 4 is 7, as I said. 4 minus 1 is 3, though. So, seeing as we keep the smallest number, I'm going to write 3 there. There we go, 3. Three um four minus one is three, so that goes there. And that is yeah, that is it. That is it for the early and the short the uh, finish time algorithm. So we can see that activity A can start on day zero, but the latest time it has got to finish is actually on day seven. Okay? And this is what we call the float. So if we have activity A over here, right, this is how long it takes. We have got a flexibility of two days, like so. So we can shift this. I should have drawn them as two things. Actually, wait. Yeah, this can actually shift like this onto day seven, and it can shift backwards. So there is an actual graph that we use to represent this information so i'm not going to go into it just yet we're going to do that in a second so activity a can start on day zero finish on day five if you want or it can start on day one finish on day six or it can start on day two and finish on day seven this is what this is all telling us over here it starts on day nine in the last for two days, it's still got a flexibility of two days. So it can start two days, it can start up to two days later than day nine. Okay? But over here, as you can see, it has to start on day three and it needs to finish on day four. We have got no flexibility there whatsoever. And that's a critical that's that is critical. Okay, that is what we've got to look for. And if we need to look for a critical path, we need to look for a lot more like this. So, for example, over here, this is not critical because it can start on day zero or it can start on day one. Okay, so it's not critical. But this one over here is critical because it needs to start on day zero and it needs to finish on day three. So that's critical. I'm going to write it down here. E is critical. G is also critical because it needs to start on day 4 and it needs to finish on day 13. 4 plus 9 is 13. That's another way you can check it. 0 plus 2 is 2. It does not equal that. So that is not critical. So that is G. H, 13 plus 1 is 14. So that is critical. A J, 14 plus 5 is 20. So that's not critical. 14 plus 6 is 20. So that is critical. And obviously the last one would be critical. Okay, and this is our critical path, okay? This is what we need in the exam. It will most likely, 10 out, 9 out of 10, ask us for critical paths. So, yes. So we can also show the flexibility of activities on a cascade diagram or a Gantz one. This might look a bit scary at first, but it's actually not that bad. So if we... Have a look at we can we can, you can you can take a guess. Let's have a look at this one over here. So we're going to have a look at this graph to help us. So, as you remember, over here, activity A tells us that we can start on day zero. It lasts for five days, and the latest time we need to finish is on day seven. Okay, think of it as a deadline. So, if I drew this over here. It needs to, um, we can say that it starts on day zero. It lasts for five days. Here we go. And we've got a deadline of day seven. So this is the flexibility. We can shift this wherever we want between the shaded area. So it can start on day one if we want. It can start on day two, but not any more than that. And we can do this for almost every single one of them. But to draw this, we usually we would draw, we would put the critical paths at the bottom because these have deadlines, very strict ones. So the first critical path is B. So B, wait for it, B 
B starts on day zero, it lasts for three days and it has to finish on day three. So it's got no flexibility, it's got no shaded area like we have over here. What's the next one? E. E starts on day, I can't remember now. E starts on day three and it needs to finish on day four. So we have this over here. That's E. The next one is G. Hold on, I can just do this. Next one is G. G needs to start on day four and finish at day nine. H needs to start on day 13. Sorry, it needs to finish on day 13. H starts on, mm, that means I need to do that again. Okay, it starts on day four, finishes on day 13. The thing is with D2 maths, it's very, it's very tedious. It's really, really annoying. Uh, next one is H. It needs to start on day 13, finish on day 14. Ah. Needs to finish on day 14, that's H. Uh, I needs to start on day 14, finish on day 20. And K starts on day 20, finish on day 22. And those are all the critical parts, okay? Usually we will put them at the bottom, and Excel like to put those at the top. I Probably OCI like to do it on the side, I don't know. Most people, so it doesn't matter which way you do it, so as long as all the critical activities are on the same line. So, let's think about all the other ones, okay? So A, we said that A starts on day zero, preferably, finishes on day uh, five, but it can finish up until day seven. B is the same thing. No, we did. We just did the B. C, it can start on day two, ah, day zero, finishes on day two, and it has a flexibility of one day. And we usually show that by having a scribble graph over there. And we do that for all of it. Usually, we won't put we won't put them on the same line. Usually, we'll have them on different lines. So for D, for example. It would start on day five. It would last for four days. One, two, three, four. And finish on day 11. I have a deadline of day 11. Just so as long as the examiner knows what you're trying to do, it will demand. I'm going to complete this. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to complete. And this is the completed Gantz or Cascade diagram. As you can see, all the ones which are floats, which is the technical name for it, are all on their separate different lines because these have flexibility to move where they want. These critical paths can't do that. So the minimum time that we can finish this off is on day 22. I'm going to very quickly talk about resource levelling and um, resource histograms. I'm not going to actually draw it because we don't have the number of workers here. But in an activity, we also need to know how many workers we need. We need to know how much resources are going to be needed for each activity. So say for example, activity A, we need two workers. Activity B, we need three workers. We can draw that on a, um, on a resource histogram to show how many workers we need each day. And for example, day one, I'm going to very quickly draw it. But for day one, activity A needs two people. Activity 3 needs a further 3 people. So therefore, on day 1 itself, we require 5 people to be working on that day. Let's say there's another 3 people. So we need 8 people to be working on that day. And we do that for each... Uh, we do that for each... Uh, what's it? Activity duration there is. So... To minimise the amount of workers that we have each day, we use the advantage of floats to level off the amount of workers. I'm gonna, this is going to be another video, but I'm going to very quickly explain it. We can use the floats to level off the amount of workers we have on each day, because the last week we want is eight workers to be working one day and two workers to be working the next day. That is not good employability. So, that is probably going to be in another video, but... Thank you for watching this one.